welcome to chemistry lover today in this video i am going to discuss about the topic which i like most and i will teach you this topic from my heart because this is a topic which is very close to my heart the topic is the frontier mole molecular orbitals and the use of the frontier molecular orbital approach in organic chemical reactions now this topic the frontier molecular orbital approach this is a relatively newer topic a relatively young topic and that's why uh, it is covered in very few books you will find the more uh, organic chemical reactions which are explained in terms of frontier molecular orbitals in very few books and also a very few teachers will explain you using this concept most of the books and most of the teachers they use the arrow pushing mechanism which we all know but this is very important because uh, when you will learn about the frontier mo molecular orbital theory you will uh, you will experience the real magic the real uh, real beauty of the organic chemistry right so let me start with what is mean by fmo or what is mean what is the full form of fmo so as you can see fmo means the frontier molecular orbital now what is frontier molecular orbital so frontier molecular orbital means the orbitals which are at the outermost of the molecule for example uh, if you consider any molecule there will be several orbitals several molecular orbitals but the orbitals which are at the periphery which are at the outermost they are the important orbitals when you consider the reactivity of the molecule if we consider the energy of the molecule then all the orbitals are important starting from the sigma 1 to the sigma n or pi all the pi and sigma orbitals all are important but if you consider re consider the reactivity then only the frontier molecular orbital that is which are at the periphery of the molecule they are important now why this is so so to explain this i have to uh, bring one analogy with elemental form of the molecule let's say you have carbon atom one carbon atom and you will explain the reactivity of this carbon atom for example you will explain the bond formation of the uh, ch4 the methane molecule so when we talk about the bond formation of ch4 or, or when we talk about the reactivity of elemental carbon we will always talk about the contribution of the orbitals the 2s orbital and the 2p orbital the two electrons in the 2s orbital and the two electrons in the 2p orbital although they are there are two more electrons in the 1s orbital but we don't consider them when we consider the reactivity of the carbon atom why this is so because this 1s orbital this is deeply buried inside the core of the atom and that's why they they take part very less efficiently when we consider the reactivity of the molecule right but if we consider the energy of overall carbon atom then we have to consider this 1s orbital so we can we can uh, apply the same logic with our molecule also for example you have any pi system for example let's see you have this alkene you have this simple alkene this ethylene and you want to measure the overall energy of the molecule then you have to consider all the ch sigma bond the cc sigma bond and cc pi bond all things you have to consider when you you are calculating the overall energy of the molecule but let's say you want to uh, explain the reactivity of the molecule then you don't need to consider this ch bonds the sigma bonds these are not important because they are very less reactive they are low in energy and they are deeply buried inside the core of the molecule the only orbital which is important here is this pi orbital this pi orbital this field pi orbital and the pi star orbital these are the important orbitals so this pi and pi star these are called the frontier molecular orbitals in the case of this ethylene molecule so we understood what is meant by frontier molecular orbitals so frontier molecular orbitals are the orbitals which are at the periphery of the molecule now i i, I told several times that uh, all the organic reactions you can classify in two categories either they are acid base reaction or they are redox reaction right now acid base reaction if you think more you will find that you can consider all the organic reagents into two categories the electrophiles and the nucleophiles so one is the electrophile 
and another one is the nucleophile all the reaction with the exception of the pericyclic reactions which are concerted reactions and controlled by the orbitals no charge is there but mostly you can consider all the reaction in terms of the reaction between one electrophile and one nucleophile now what is the definition of electrophile and nucleophile in terms of frontier molecular orbital theory so let's say you have a molecule any arbitrary molecule and the molecule has these energy levels these are the energy levels of the molecule and so these represent the orbitals and we uh, we give them name psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 psi 4 psi 5 psi 6 let's say these six molecular orbitals are there and now this one is filled this one is filled and this one is filled so these three orbitals are filled you can see these three orbitals they are filled and these three they are vacant right so these are the vacant orbitals and these are the filled orbitals right now here comes two very important terminology the homo and the lumo so this orbital we call it homo homo means the highest occupied molecular orbital h for highest o for occupied m for molecular and o for orbital so highest occupied molecular orbitals that means it has three molecular orbitals which are occupied but among these three this psi 3 is having the highest energy that's why it is called the highest occupied molecular orbital now if we consider the vacant or unoccupied orbital then this one is called lumo lumo means lowest unoccupied molecular orbital that is you have these three unoccupied orbitals but among these three only this psi 4 is having the lowest energy so that's why it is called the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital or the lumo now what is mean by a electrophile or a nucleophile so nucleophile is a species which has which has a high energy homo right so any molecule if you consider the nucleophile is a species which has a high energy homo so this is the nucleophile and the nucleophile has a high energy homo right so the condition of a species to be nucleophile is it should have a high energy homo and what is the condition for a thing or for a species to be electrophile so for a species to be electrophile it should have low energy lumo it should have a low energy lumo why because if you have a high energy homo in your molecule it can easily give this electron to another species and we know what nucleophile do nucleophile give electron to some species to some electrophile so uh, if your molecule or if your homo has high energy higher the energy it will have the higher tendency to give the electron so that will increase its nucleophilicity right so this nucleophilicity and the energy of homo that uh, run in same direction and that's why the, your home uh, nucleophile should have high energy homo whereas for electrophile case electrophile what it does it it accepts electron and if you have low energy orbital that will be more efficient in taking electron so if you have low energy lumo that will be more efficient in dragging the electron so this is the perfect combination high energy homo and low energy lumo so these are the conditions for a species to be electrophile or nucleophile now so these are the elementary things which we should know uh, while considering the fmo approach now this is the introductory video and in the latter part of the video series so i will make a series of videos on this topic and in the latter part i will discuss about all the reactions which you already know that uh, for example sn1 reaction the subs nucleophilic substitution reaction sn2 reaction the elimination reaction the addition reaction all the reactions you know but you know the arrow pushing mechanism for example let's say we consider the reaction between this ethylene and this bromine so what we do we do the arrow pushing mechanism like this so we get this bromonium ion like this and now we say that this bromine br minus this will attack here so we will get this 
so we know this mechanism but i will discuss all these reactions in terms of molecular orbitals what molecular orbitals are involved here for example uh, the attack take place from the homo of this molecule homo of this ethylene to this lumo of this bromine so what are the homo and lumo involved in this case i will discuss all these things and you will see that uh, the stereochemistry part if you consider the stereochemistry of any molecule if you have to predict the stereochemical outcome then this orbitals orbital involvement what orbitals are in, in involved in this reaction that becomes very important so you have to know this so i will end this video here uh, make sure that you subscribe my channel uh, so that next time when i upload any video regarding this topic you will get the video and also press the bell icon thank you for watching